Andy Price with you here as we're getting loaded up and ready to go for the semifinal game from Milroy. It is the Young American Cardinals taking on the St. Patrick Irish, and we've got the game for you on PrepSpotlight.tv. Who's going to make it to the championship game? We'll answer that question in the next couple hours. You're watching State C Amateur Baseball. The 2020 Class C Minnesota Amateur Baseball Tournament is brought to you in partnership with the Minnesota Baseball Association and presented to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 is the hub for all things sports with the Xfinity Sports Zone. And Wings Financial. We're for people like you. All right, back here at the ball yard in Milroy, we've got the new uh, Young America Cardinals being introduced right now. They just won the game, if you were watching, 9-1 to over Bird Island in the quarterfinals. Earlier in the tournament, they rallied to beat Laverne, 5-4, to and they shut out Union Hill yesterday, 6 nothing. So that is how they arrived here into the final four. Then on the other side, it's the St. Patrick Irish, and they advanced on with an exciting 2-1 win over the Bluffton Braves this morning. They were actually at noon. Before that, they beat, uh, they uh, had, uh, they've won four games, actually, as I'm trying to collect my thoughts to get here. They beat Regal two weeks ago, 5-1. 10 to 1 over Rochester and then 16 to 4 yesterday over Carver and then a 2-1 nail biter this morning or early afternoon against the Bluffton Braves to get to the semifinals. So it's the red clad Cardinals from Young America on Highway 212 and they will be facing off against St. Patrick the Irish. So let's get you to the lineups right now. It's we rush into this semifinal game, the last game completing about 40 minutes ago. Isaac Horman will lead off and play for, uh, third base for the Young America squad. Batting second will be Bryce Panning. Matt, Matt Mann will be batting third and playing left field. Raj Whitaker, who homered in the quarterfinal game, will be in the cleanup spot and playing first base. Hunter Rickaby, the catcher, bats fifth. Barrett Panning who uh, related to Bryce Panning. He will be the DH batting six, batting seventh. Dylan Whitaker, he's at second base. Cole Peters is batting eighth and in right field. And Blake Pistolka is your shortstop, and he'll bat ninth. He's going to, they're all going to face Christian Medic, M-E-D-I-C-K. And Medic, the right-hander, is getting ready to warm up. He is yet to pitch in our tournament play through the first four wins for St. Patrick. Now, we saw... We saw the uh, great Mankato State pitcher, Minnesota State pitcher, Colin Dank, pitch in the first game against Regal. He has not pitched since. They say if they win today, they might have him for tomorrow in the championship game. So we'll see what happens on that side of it. But uh, they are going with Christian Medic in the first game today or the semifinal game today. This is the semifinals of Medic wearing 15, the right-hander he will face Young America. The defense for St. Patrick, they will be at, behind the plate. It is Matt Ambrose at first base. Seth Ambrose, the two brothers who played Division I hockey. Just Jordan Garaki, the manager's son, is at second base. At shortstop is Jack Fridges. At third base is his brother Ryan Fridges. In the outfield, from left to right, Jace Westman will be in left. In center field, it is Kyle Rodas and in right field, Zach Andrus. And that is the way that it more uh, lines up. Matt Ambrose, Seth Ambrose, Garaki at second, Freges and Freges, Jack and Ryan Freges. So we are just about ready to go. The final game in Milroy. 23 games in all. Leading off 
And we will get things rolling right now as Horman comes to the plate. Horman, 7 for 14, 3 runs, 5 RBI on the game. In the last contest, he was 3 for 5. So Horman set the table very well, and he is the leadoff hitter. And the first pitch is grounded to third. And over there is Ryan Fridges. He throws low, but a ball is scooped in the air by Seth Ambrose. Now batting center fielder number 25, Bryce Panning. And there's one down. Bryce Panning comes to the plate. Bryce hitting 6 for 12 in the tournament. That's 500 in the first game. Just ending moments ago, he was 1 for 5, but he scored two runs in the First pitch just is off the plate for Medic. M E D I C K. Christian Medic pitching for St. Patrick. Trying to pitch him through to the championship game. Pitch high and didn't land correctly on that delivery. Two balls and no strikes. Andy Price and Greg Wilford with you here. We have a game going on over in Springfield. It's Fairmont and Cold Spring. Eric Bremer and Kit Callis is the team over in Springfield. 2-0 pitch is low. Three balls and no strikes to Bryce Panning. Bryce, the center fielder, wearing number 25. One out in the top of the first inning. And the 3-0 pitch is over for a strike. Get me over fastball, and it's 3-1. Cloudy evening in Milroy as we get started about 20 minutes late from the designated time. Ground ball to Garaki. Garaki fumbles it, but he has enough time over at second base to make the play. So two up and two down. And Panning is out at, on the ground ball, and that's going to bring up Matt Mann. Mann, three for 12 so far in the tournament. He was one for four with an RBI in the game in their win against Bird Island. 9-1 was the final of that game. And the first pitch to Matt Mann is over for a strike. Medic is not going to overpower you. He's going to have to mix it up and throw strikes and, and keep them off balance. So far, he's induced two ground balls. Pitched low on the breaking ball, and it's 1-1. One and one. Medic is listed as from Jordan, Minnesota, as his hometown. As we've mentioned in the past, that the little hamlet of St. Patrick is in between New Prague and Jordan. Fly ball out to right. That's going to be in the triangle and not making the catch is the right field Andrews. So we'll see how that goes. It is a tough play in the triangle between first and second and the right fielder in that no man's land area and we'll see if they are going to rule that a hit or an air. Still nothing on the board as of yet. So at first base is Matt Mann. And that brings up Roch Whitaker. Whitaker hit a two-run home run in the earlier game. That is an air. I'm going to go air nine. Air on the outfielder. And the throw to second on the stolen base attempt. And safe at second is Matt Mann. So Matt with the, Mann with the stolen base. Now the runner's in scoring position. No hits yet. Two quick ground ball outs and then a ball that was stuck in that Bermuda Triangle between first, second, and right field. So runner at second, count 0-1 to Roch Whitaker. Whitaker looks at a breaking ball low, and it's one ball and one strike. Young America at St. Patrick with the birth in tomorrow's championship game in Class C on the line. It's 1 o'clock start in Springfield. The final game here in Milroy over three weekends. Breaking ball misses again, low, and it's two and one. The wind is kicked up again, and now it's blowing more out of the north than it is the west. So we saw a home run on a what looked like a standard fly ball in the last game, and it drifted and drifted, and it's only 3.05 down the line. 2-1 the pitch is low, and it's three balls and a strike. Three balls, one strike. (laughs) 
Raj Whitaker. Four for 11 so far in this tournament, and he'll walk on four pitches. So two runners on to st- for the top of the first in Young America. Hunter Rickaby now, the catcher, was batting fifth. He is one for 11, but he has three runs batted in. He had an RBI in the last game on a ground ball. Runner to third, and they, he hit a ball to the shortstop in the first inning. They were not playing to cut the run off, and so a run scored on that. But he is just one for 11 at the plate. He does have two runners on as the breeze freshens a little bit as you take a look at some of the umbrellas around the area. First pitch, grounded back, two hops. The first baseman, or the pitcher, running towards first base, fields it and flips it to the first baseman for the third out. And that does it for the top of the first inning. And Young America unable to score in their first crack at the plate. St. Patrick coming to the plate next. We're going to keep it here and give you the lineup and batting order for both, or the batting order for St. Patrick and then the defensive alignment for Young America. Bottom of the first inning here. Leading off will be Jack Fridges, the shortstop, who goes to MSU Mankato. Jordan Duraki, manager's son, is playing second base, and he'll bat second. Kyle Rodas is in center field he'll bat third Matt Ambrose who homered here a couple weeks ago is batting cleanup and will be catching Seth Ambrose is playing first base and batting fifth Dom DeLuca DHing and batting sixth Ryan Freeges is at third base brother of Jack and he will bat seventh Zach Endress who had a solid effort in the first game today in right field batting eighth and Jace Westman is batting ninth so DeLuca DHing for the pitcher and for the Young America Cardinals, it is left-hander Josh Lenz. Lenz has pitched in this tournament, and he has uh, come in in uh, relief, if I'm not mistaken, as I'm taking a look at the pitching stats for the team so far. Josh Lenz, six innings pitched, giving up five hits. He struck out five and walked three. Two wins on this team for Christian Johnson. Johnson got the win. He's a drafted pitcher out of Cologne. He went eight innings in the last game, the quarterfinal win over Bird Island, and picked up his second win. Dylan Whitaker pitched a very strong effort in their shutout win yesterday over Union Hill, and he has the third win. This is the fourth game for Young America, fifth game for St. Patrick. Across the infield for Young America, Roch Whitaker, who DH last game will be playing first base. Dylan Whitaker, who pitched yesterday, he's at second base. Brady Pistolka is at shortstop. Blake Pistolka is at shortstop. And Horman, Isaac Horman, is at third base. In the outfield, Mann, Panning, and Cole Peters. That's how the defense lines up. And coming to the plate now in their green clad uniforms, Jack Fridges. And Fridges comes into this game 7 for 15. He was 2 for 4 with a run and an RBI in game 1 today, which was a quarterfinal win. A good game. Very solid baseball game. 2 to 1. St. Patrick outlasted the Bluffton Braves. First pitch ball from Lenz. So Lenz the lefty. Gets the assignment to try to pitch his Young America team into the championship game. Two balls and no strikes. Fastball misses low, and it's 3-0. and oh. Lenz looks like he has a little bit of a labor to him and just his first at-bat. But he, he played first base in the game that just got finished 30 minutes ago, 40 minutes ago. 3-0 pitch, misses, and a walk to start the game for Freegis. That'll bring up Jordan Garaki. First time we saw St. Patrick play a couple of weeks ago, Garaki was down in the lineup. He has come into the number two hole, and he is six for 15, three runs and two RBI. Garaki in the earlier game, one for four. He struck out twice, did not score a run. Garaki, the second baseman. And the first pitch is over for a strike. So after four balls to start the game, Lenz delivers the fastball in for strike one. 
Bridges at first, and they like to run. Garaki at the plate. Throwing over to first, just a soft toss to dirty up the uniform for Fridges. Running as Fridges, ground ball towards second, and in the hole, they're going to just have to get one. And a solid play by the second baseman, Dylan Whitaker, to reverse directions. And as he reverses directions, he's able to get the out. That looked like a classic hit and run where Garaki hit behind the stealing base runner. Whitaker makes the play. Garaki advances the runner to second base. Fridges is over at second. One out, scoreless bottom of the first, and that's going to bring up Kyle Rodas. Rodas, six for 17 so far in the tournament. Rodas, this first game today in the quarterfinal win over Bluffton, was one for three with an RBI. First pitch was off the plate, ball one. Runner at second, one out. Rodas, the center fielder. Swings and misses at the off-speed pitch, and the count is one ball and one strike. Fridge is over at second, advanced on the ground ball. He was off and running on the 0-1 pitch. Lenz peeks back at the runner and delivers. Ball is flown out to right field. Peters is there. Peters calls for it, and he makes the catch. So two down. Matt Ambrose comes to the plate. The catcher has to shed the shin guards. Now that is a catcher number 10, Matt Ambrose. The Irish with the green jerseys that read St. Patrick across the letters in cursive. Yes, cursive. Young America, the Cardinals in their red jerseys with the city name, town name across the letters of their jersey. Two outs. Ambrose looks at a pitch that slides off the plate, ball one. Bottom of the first inning. Winner advancing to the championship and we can tell you Cold Spring has jumped on Fairmont one to nothing. Pitch on the way and it's hit out to center field. He was shading him towards left, but it hangs up long enough to, for Panning to get there and record the out. So no hits for St. Patrick in the first. They leave a runner who was there via the walk. It's 0-0, and we'll be back on PrepSpotlight.tv.
All right, back with you here on PrepSpotlight.tv. A little technical issue. We are back. We had an out on the first batter and a base hit from the second batter. So Barrett Panning hit the ball hard to third base, but the play was made to get the out. Dylan Whitaker comes up with the base hit to center field. Second hit of the game. And Cole Peters, the number eight hitter, comes to the plate. Runner at first and one out in the second. Again, the pitcher, Christian Medic. Pitch over for a strike as he again finds the plate, working ahead in the count. Runner at first is Whitaker. Pitch in the dirt, gets by Ambrose, and that's going to move the runner over to second. So for the second straight inning, a runner is in scoring position for Young America. Scoreless game, top of the second from Milroy. One ball, one strike, Medic. Delivers a pitch above the letters, hacking his Peters. Peters right now 3 for 12, hitting 250. He has scored two runs in this, their fourth game. Dylan would occur at second. Two, two strike pitch, and they get the foul tip and the catch on it, and Peters strikes out. So two down, and that will bring up Blake Pistolka. Pistolka, one for 11 so far, but he has scored two runs in the last game. He scored a run. 0 for 4 at the plate, but he found himself on base and made things happen in their win over Bird Island. Young America. Fly ball to center, and Rodas is there, and Rodas is going to make the catch. So after getting the hit and the wild pitch to move the runner over to second, Nothing else happens. We're going to move aside for a break and come back for the bottom of the second inning. You're watching PrepSpotlight.tv's coverage of the State C Amateur Baseball Tournament. Both sides, are, both sides of this uh, game are both fan bases chirping at each other a little bit. Why not get fired up? It's a chance to go to the championship game. Josh Lenz pitching, and he will face Seth Ambrose. Here in Milroy, the Milroy Yankees ballpark on the south end of Highway 68, or the south end of town right on Highway 68. And Lenz, the lefty, will deliver, and the first pitch to Seth Ambrose is low, ball one, and catches a piece of the umpire. Umpiring this game is Mike Monita behind the plate and Russ Lundquist on the bases. So... One ball, no strikes. And Lenz making another appearance, second appearance in the tournament for Young America. Young America up on Highway 212. Went through there this morning on our way down from the cities. One ball, no strikes. Ground ball towards the hole, short and third. Good play by Pistolka, but Ambrose gets down the line well enough for an infield base hit. First single, first base hit for the squad from St. Patrick. Now batting designated hitter number 24, 
Ambrose now with that base hit is five for 16. Dom DeLuca, the designated hitter, comes to the plate. DeLuca, three for 11. He was 0 for this morning. DeLuca, the right-handed hitter, wearing number 24. Runner at first. And the bunt play is on, and he pushes it towards the first base side. And Lenz, for a second, wanted to throw to second, but I don't know if he heard where to go, and he opts to flip it over for this out at first, a sacrifice by DeLuca, and there's a runner at second base now with one out. So their first runner in scoring position, I take that back, Fridges has got over the scoring position as well. So they also have had a runner in scoring position in their first two innings, and that brings up Ryan Fridges. Fridges for the game. Three for 16 for the tournament. And in the first game, Fridges was one for four. Pitch misses off the plate. One ball, no strikes. Lends to Ryan Fridges, who plays third base. Seth Ambrose, first baseman, is at second. Knocking it down at second is Whitaker. And Whitaker is unable to get the out. But the play made by Whitaker at second by Dylan Whitaker saves a run because Ambrose would have scored had that ball trickled through to the outfield. So it's runners at first and third. Hit given, infield hit. And so runners are at first and third now. That's going to bring up Zach Andrews. Zach had a very solid earlier game. He's 5 for 14 now on the tournament, and he was 2 for 4 with a run scored. He's got runners at the corners, and the first pitch is laced out to left field. Tracking it is Mann. Mann's going to throw home. Will there be a play at the plate? It is cut off, and Seth Ambrose scores on the sacrifice fly by Zach Andrews. RBI for Andrus, and it's one to nothing. St. Patrick takes a lead in the bottom of the second inning. At first base still is Fridges, who reached on the infield single. They are going to appeal the third. Appeal the third to see if Ambrose left early. Not the case. So the Irish have taken the early lead here in the second inning. And at the plate is the number nine hitter, Jace Westman. Westman playing left field. And with one out, runner at first base. First pitch from Lenz is inside, and the runner goes. So they he went halfway. We can't give that a stolen base. That's a pass ball off the glove of the catcher, Rickaby. One down. Yeah, sorry, there are two outs here. Two outs, there was the sacrifice, and both were sacrificed. The sacrifice fly and the sacrifice bunt. So two outs in the inning. And the pitch is low. Two balls and one no strikes. Two and oh, two outs. Rudder at second. In the second. It's one to nothing. St. Patrick looking to advance on. As are the young American Cardinals. Inside, three balls, no strikes. Westman, the number nine hitter. If he reaches, that brings back the top of the order in Jack Fridges. Fridges also walked to start the game. They are at bat, bottom of the first inning, not the game. Three balls, no strikes, two outs, and the pitch on the way. It's over for a strike, three and one. Lots of young America Cardinal fans here today it's double the number of supporters of St. Patrick Irish fans supporters 3-1 with two outs hard foul ball it's foul, way foul kicks off the fence and back into the field of play and that will force Mann to run over and get it back in sacrifice fly scored the run 
Seth Ambrose. Three balls, two strikes. Runner at second. Pitch on the way. Grounded towards third and through. That might score a second run. Around third and scoring easily is Ryan Fridges. So Jace Westman comes through with an RBI and St. Patrick is up two to nothing. RBI single for Westman into the hole between short and third. Diving third baseman Isaac Horman could not come up with it. Fridges walked his first time up. Getting set now is Lenz. Lenz looks at the runner at first and delivers. Pitch is outside. Ball one. Little off speed pitch. Three hits now, two runs. All coming in this inning. Seth Ambrose started out infield single. Two of them infield singles. All three of them infield. No, two of them infield singles. Sorry. Ball on a strike. Fairmont has tied the game against Cold Spring. It's 1-1. Here it's 2-0. St. Patrick. Pitch low. Three balls, one strike, and already we're warming up pitchers. Uh, Actually, if I'm not mistaken, warming up looks like it could be Christian Johnson. Strike, and the count is 3-2. So he pitched eight innings in the last game, and he's warming up right now. Loosening up, I guess, would be the best way to put it. 2 nothing, and the count is three balls, two strikes. Everybody's running, and... Westman at first base. Three balls, two strikes to Freges. Westman dancing. Pitch is grounded towards the third baseman, Horman. He fields it. Goes across the diamond and makes the requisite throw for the out. We're going to the top of the third inning. Two runs have scored. And Young America will come to the plate in the top of the third looking to get some of it back. We'll be right back on PrepSpotlight.tv. Coverage of the semifinals, the Class C State Tournament, 2 nothing. St. Patrick over Young America. Top of the third inning, the score bug is backwards from what we would normally do, but we were inputting these teams on the fly and not exactly sure where, who was home and who was visitor. So St. Patrick on the left side of your scoreboard is actually the home team. They'll get the last cracks. 
Young America to the plate now in the third inning. And it is back to the top of the order. Isaac Horman grounded out to the third baseman in his first trip to the plate. He's 7 for 15 on the tournament. 1-0 pitch, curveball way up high. Two balls, no strikes. Fastball catches the corner from Christian Medic. Two balls and a strike. Medic has had a runner in scoring position in each of the first two innings, been able to pitch out of it. Fly ball towards right field. That one is going to be played by Andrus, and Andrus is there for the out. One down, and Bryce panning to the plate. Panning grounded out to the second baseman. He's 6 for 13 now. Panning, the left-handed hitting center fielder. Came into the day hitting over 700 in the tournament, and that was tops. Sun peeking through the clouds now as it's just getting to the area where the grandstand is at, so we'll be in our face for a little bit. This field faces south and west from home plate. One ball, no strikes. Takes a little something off of it, and he gets the pitch across, and it's one and one now. St. Patrick scoring two in the second. We're in the top of the third. Medic. That looks like a base hit as the ground ball by Panning. Rolls in the hole between first and second, and Panning gets a base hit. Third hit, sorry, second hit for Young America. That man to the plate, man reached on a pop-up that landed in between the right fielder, first baseman, and second baseman. It was scored an error, nine. That's the error that's on the board for St. Patrick. Pitch in the dirt, nobody goes anywhere as Medic. Throw back over to first base to check on Panning. You see the effects of the sun on the field. The shadows in over most of right field and now just a bare spot in right center field where the sun is shining. Hey, that Outfielders are in the shadows. Runner at first, and here's your pitch to Mann, and it misses. Count is two and one. Two and one. From Medic to Matt Mann. Mann reached second base. In his first time up, again reaching on the air, and then he was advanced over on a walk from Ro by Roch Whitaker. Runner going, ground ball towards third, and it gets under the glove of Fridges. Stopping at second base is Panning, and Mann hits the ball hard. It skips underneath the glove of Fridges, who had to take a couple steps to his left. Will be a base hit. So two hits this inning, and Mann has reached base both times. Whitaker now, homered his last game. They've got the pickup play on and almost get the shortstop in behind Panning. Runners at first and second, one out. Medic delivers outside, ball one. Talking to the crew, 
coaching staff and manager Garaki for the Irish after their game. I said, who's throwing this one? And they all looked at me and said, we'll figure it out. Their decision was to go with Christian Medic. Medic gets a strike called. One ball, one strike. One out. Two runners on in the third. Two nothing is your score. The team in the green leads. Late timeout called by Roch Whitaker. One out, two runners on. Maddox sets and delivers. Breaking ball is going to stay high, and the count is two and one. This is the time of the tournament where you, you're dipping into your second and third and fourth arms. The Class C tournament, when you're playing a little few more games, they allow you to draft three pitchers from your region. Pitch high, and it's now three and one. Medic is not a drafted pitcher. He is a member of the Irish. Three balls and a strike, one out. Pitch is low, and we've got bases loaded. Two base hits and a walk. And with one out, the faithful for Young America getting louder. Hunter Rickaby came up with two runners on in the first inning and grounded back to Medic to end the first. As we have this break in the action, we take a look over at the game in Springfield, Cold Spring, Fairmont, tied 1-1. Base is loaded here, and Rickaby, Hunter Rickaby facing Christian Medic. First pitch for Medic. Strike over the plate. Gets the fastball over. Medic steps off the back of the mound, composes himself, looks in and gets his sign. Medic looks at the runner at third. Delivers, breaking pitch, inside, corner. Inside corner, I meant to say. No balls and two strikes. Rickaby now down on the count, 0-2. 1 for 12 right now in the tournament, and he takes a curveball and hits it into right field. And that will score two runs. They try to get the runner back at second, but two come in on the Hunter Rickaby single to right. Panning and Mann score. And we're all tied up 2-2. Another slow curve that Rickaby waited on and flipped it right over the second baseman's head. Runners now at first and second. Four straight runners have reached with one out. And the bullpen gets to work. Four straight runners. Three base hits and a walk. Bear Penning hit the ball hard. Third baseman. Fridge has made a play on him in the start of the second inning. That was a play that happened when we had lost our speed for just a second. So you'll have to trust me. That is what happened. No balls and a strike. Medic, breaking ball, gets it in for a strike 0-2. It's a slow curve, and that curve didn't fool Rickaby, who gets the two RBI single to right field. All squared here in the top of the third inning. Medic delivers. Just off, off the plate, and it's a ball and two strikes. One ball, two strikes. We're here in the top of the third inning. St. Patrick scored two in the second. Now they've given him right back. 
Good stop by Matt Ambrose as he knocks the ball down and doesn't allow the base runners to advance. Two and two. St. Patrick playing their fifth game over the three weekends. This is the fourth game for Young America. 2-2 pitch on the way, and it's fouled off the top of the helmet of the catcher Ambrose. They're in the fifth inning already in Springfield, Cold Spring and Fairmont. Two balls, two strikes, and an out. Two runners on. Swing, and it's foul tipped into the glove. So the strikeout for Panning. Two down, and that'll bring up Dylan Whitaker. Whitaker with a base hit. He advanced to the second on a wild pitch. He's up now with two runners on. First pitch, breaking ball, and he gets just the end of the bat on it, and it ends up in foul, out of the ballpark, foul down the right field side. Hunter Rickaby at first, he has two RBI with the single. At second base is Roch Whitaker, who reached base on balls. One and one the count. Medic checks the runner at second and delivers low, two balls and a strike. Looks like Joe Grody again for St. Patrick warming up. Outside, and the count, three balls and a strike. Medic, who found the zone in the first two innings, had his defense make some plays behind him now, has given up three base hits and a walk. Another walk loads the bases, and the count is three and one. Pitch on the way, and it is low, ball four. So the bases are loaded again. So Dylan Whitaker is at first base, and that moves everybody up a bag. Roch Whitaker is at third. Hunter Rickaby is at second. Cole Peters struck out his first time up. He wears 42. And we'll get a stoppage as the manager, Garaki, is going to make a pitching change. I think the pitcher... Walked, got done with his tosses and walked closer to the bullpen catcher or the person who's catching in the bullpen. And he's going to discuss this, and they do make the change. So out of the game is Christian Medic, who goes two and two-thirds. And that's going to bring back in Joe Grote, he pit, or Grody. He pitched earlier. We'll keep it right here. Look over at the other game in Springfield and note that Fairmont has taken the lead. 2-1, the score there. That's in the fifth inning. We're still here in the top of the third inning, and Joe Grody pitched earlier today in the win. In fact, he picked up the save. Grody came in and pitched two innings, gave up a hit, walked a couple, and struck out a couple, including a strikeout to end the game in their 2-1 win over Bluffton. Here he inherits runners at every bag in the third inning. So two and two-thirds innings for Christian Medic. So Peters 
announced the second time, and he's going to step into the box with two outs. Peters had a runner in scoring position when he struck out in the second. Grody gives up four hits. Swing, or I'm sorry, Medic gives up four hits. Grody comes in and gets a strike on the first pitch. All the runners on base are Medics to be had in the book. Pitch on the way, and it's popped up, and the count is 0-2. Peters, 3 for 13 in the tournament, and he lifts it to left, and that's going to fall short. So that was score one. In comes the throw for the second run, and a little baby single from Cole Peters does the job, and he does it in a big way, a two-RBI single, and it is now 4-2. Young America has taken the lead. Four to two, all four runs in this inning give the RBIs to... Cole Peters. And Blake Pistolka comes to the plate. He's 0 for 1. Runners at first and second. Scoring on that were Whitaker and Rickaby. Pistolka fouls off the first pitch 0 and 1. Based on what we've seen here through two and a half innings or a little less than that as both teams are might be having to piecemeal this together with their pitching staff pitch is high one ball one strike one ball one strike And the pitch on the way from Grody, and it's high, and it's two balls and a strike. Four runs in the inning. How many players have reached base? Six of eight batters have reached base. Two balls and a strike. Pistolka looks at a strike, and the count is two balls and two strikes. Five hits now for Young America. The Cardinals have... Open it up in this inning with four runs. On four hits. A couple walks to help the cause as well. And now the count is full. Flip it back to the top of the order if Pistolka reaches. Three balls, two strikes, and two outs. Runners are going. And ground ball, Pistolka fielded at third by Fridges, and he throws across the diamond, and they get the out. So they bat nine in the inning and score four runs. Four runs on four hits, a couple walks, and that's how you score it. So we'll go to the bottom of the third. 4-2, Young America has seesawed back in front. What's special about high school sports? The passion the excitement the memories now a three at the buzzer go oh. it's good two boys wins it for the rebels it's about impacting your community connecting your business to this audience this is where your customers live, where they shop. This is their circle of life. This is where your business should be. Connect with your best potential customers. This is your invitation. Get in the game. Jordan Garaki coming to the plate in the third inning. 
the long top half of the third inning has given Josh Lenz the lead and his Young America Cardinals are now on the plus side on the scoreboard. First pitch was a breaking ball for a strike. Second pitch down low. It was another off-speed pitch. And the count one and one to Garaki. He grounded out to second base in the first inning. He is six for 16 now on this tournament. He led the Irish most of the season in offensive categories. And he slaps a base hit to start the third inning. Single up the middle, his first hit. One for two. And that will bring up Kyle Rodas. Rodas flew out to right field in the first inning. Rodas now 6 for 18, hitting 333. Fairmont leading in Springfield. A berth in tomorrow's championship game on the line in that battle over Cold Spring. Here a berth in the championship game in the battle between Young America and St. Patrick. And Rodas loops the single in to left. Rounding second and sliding around as Garaki as he thought about it for a second. Heading towards third, but not with the ball hit to left field. So quickly, two singles, and that's going to bring up Matt Ambrose. 4 2 your score. The final game here in Milroy out of 23 games over the last three weekends. It's been an enjoyable experience for all who've been here. Now St. Patrick, trailing by two, has two runners on. Ambrose flew out to center field his first time up. First pitch is in for a strike from Josh Lenz. Getting a little scurrying down in the bullpen area, but nobody officially is warming up. Checks the runner at second, Lenz, and delivers, and this ball is... Hit out to left. That's going to fall in front of the left fielder, Mann. Rounding third and heading home is Garaki. No throw in on that one, and it's 4-3. St. Patrick, without an out being recorded, has three base hits. And Ambrose with the RBI. That's six RBI on the tournament for Ambrose. Four to three is your score now. Runners at first and second. Again, it's Johnson who just got done throwing eight innings who's warming up. Now he's actually warming up. Lenz is going to stay in there. Josh working his third inning. He's gone just two plus right now. And that brings up Seth Ambrose. Seth singled and scored his first time up. Infield single. Came around to score on the RBI base hit. Or it was a sacrifice fly from Zach Andres. Foul ball on the first pitch, 0-1, two runners on, and Lenz delivers, and Ambrose hits it towards third. They're going to get the out at third and then throwing it across, and it's 5-3 on the double play. So quick thinking by Foreman. And a double play puts a little bit of a stop to the momentum going in the third inning here. Runner at second is Matt Ambrose. DeLuca, who sacrificed the runner over his first time up. And the pitch is on the way and inside. Horman, Isaac Horman at third base, getting the tailor-made play. Hit at him. He steps on third and throws across to get Ambrose for the double play. Ball and no strikes. Pitch is off the plate inside, and it's 2-0. and oh. Runner at second is the tying run, but we're only in the bottom of the third inning here. 4-3 your score, 2-0 the count. Lenz 
takes his look in. And the 2-0 pitch, the delivery, is high. Three balls and no strikes. Ryan Fridges is on deck. He had an infield single his first time up. Three balls, no strikes. Saddam DeLuca, the designated hitter, and the pitch is on the way. Fastball gets over, three and one. Cold Springs still trailing. Fairmont two to one. In the sixth inning already. Pitch on the way, slash foul, and we've worked the count full. Three balls, two strikes. There are two outs on that double play. St. Patrick did get a run back. They're trailing four to three. We've got a runner sitting out at second base. Lens with the full count pitch delivers and it's inside low. Pitch gets away from the catcher and on to third is Matt Ambrose. So oh, Ambrose goes over to third and now runners are at the corner as Lens will bring up Ryan Fridges who did have the uh, single. Singled and scored in the second. So this game is. The game's pace has been dictated by pitchers who have gotten a, had a lot of runners on base, especially in the last frame. Lens kicks and delivers. Pitch misses inside, and it's 1-0. and Fridge is the third baseman. Gets the 1-0 pitch and rifles it to right field. Scoring will be Ambrose, and we are all square up 4-4. RBI single for Fridges. And it is tied up. So we will have a pitching change, and we're going to come back with the Young man who pitched eight innings in this first game at 3 o'clock, and they're going to bring him out and see how long they can get out of Christian Johnson. So we're going to take a break. We'll be back after this break on PrepSpotlight.tv.
This one driven to the gap in left center field. It's a deep ball, and it's going to land, and it's gone! A two-run home run for Cold Spring. Duffner makes it a 2 nothing game here in the top of the first inning. Driven to right. Call watches it go over his head. Back-to-back -back two-run homers for the first baseman, Duffner. Austin Duffner makes it 5 nothing Cold Spring. One strike on Duffner as Weiss kicks and fires. This one driven to center field. Back is Rucker. Does he do it again? Yes, he does. Three home runs for Duffner. And it's 10 to 3, Gold Spring. Unbelievable. My goodness. Austin Duffner with three home runs. Top of the fourth inning, and it is 5-4 now. St. Patrick in front, RBI single, delivered by Zach Andrus. And that is the lead run at this moment. So Horman, Isaac Horman at the plate in the fourth. And the count one ball and one strike. Joe Grody, the hard throwing Faribault Laker, misses outside two and one. Horman over two, and he pops it up. See if Ambrose has a play on it, and he doesn't. Into the netting. And the count is now two and two. Ambrose making the effort. Face planting into the net. Hopefully it's a soft net. I don't know if it left any marks. Horman grounded out to third and he flew out to right field. Horman now seven for 16. Breaking ball misses. So right now it's two drafted pitchers going at it. Joe Grody for Faribault. Foul tip, count stays 2-2. He pitched earlier, couple innings. Isaac, I'm sorry, Christian Johnson. That's Isaac Horman at the plate. Christian Johnson for Young America now in this 5-4 game. Pitch on the way, and it's hit out towards center field. Rodas is there, and Rodas catches it off to one side, and there is an out. All nine guys came to the plate in the third inning for Young America. Bryce Panning singled and scored. His last time up. And Grody delivers high fastball. Top of the fourth. All four runs scored by Young America in the third inning. On the outside corner, strike one. Took a little off that pitch. And the count is one ball, one strike. Sun now about... 15 minutes from setting, and another strike, and the count one and two to the center fielder panning. Seven for 14 in the tournament. Fastball high, and it's two balls and two strikes. We're in the top of the fourth inning. The other game in the seventh, Fairmont leading. Pitch is inside, and it's three balls, two strikes. One out in the fourth. Grody delivers, swing and a miss. So Grody comes in and gets one or two quick outs, and that will bring up the number three hole hitter, Matt Mann. Mann has reached base both times. First on an air, second one was a single. He also scored. Now batting number 32, Matt Mann. Ball one. And Grody delivers, and that pitch is off speed. Strike, one ball, one strike. Top of the fourth inning. Pitch on the way. A breaking ball misses off the plate, two and one. Andy Price and Greg Wilfert with you here. Wrapping up coverage in Milroy. Popped up, looks like it might stay in play. Ambrose is chasing after it, and the pitcher. Grody says, I'll just 
cut in between you. I'm wearing a different color uniform, but I'll just cut right in between you and make the out. So three up and three down. We haven't had that. That's a rare occurrence in this game. We'll go to a break and be back on PrepSpotlight.tv. Running for a base hit. Morris now backs up. Arnold serves one in the left, and that's a base hit. And Chan Hassan takes the lead right back. No one to Halleck. Back and off the foot of the pitcher. It bounces towards left field. Colpack coming home. The throw to the plate. Not in time. The game is tied at five. Two pitch. Base hit right field. That'll do it. Matt Oy comes up and pokes one through the drawn in infield. And the Moorhead Brewers win it six to five in ten innings. This one driven to center field. Back is Rucker. Does he do it again? Yes, he does. Three home runs for Duffner. And it's ten to three. Gold Spring. Unbelievable. Run scored here today. Here's the 2 2. Strike three. Another one gone. Coming back to the sunset, the director did not tell the executive producer to make the move that quickly. <laughs> the first pitch from Christian Johnson. <laughs> nice shot of the sunset out there. Well, it's kind of a tough shot. There's some whispering clouds. All right, let's get back to the action. Christian Johnson. There's been two Christians pitching in this game. Christian Medic for St. Patrick. That's Christian Johnson back in the game. 4-1. Fairmont looks to be gaining an upper hand on Cold Spring. Batting is Jack Fridges, and he will walk on four pitches. So Fridges starts off with a walk. Should close the book on Lenz. He, get, he went two plus, or two and two thirds, I'm sorry, innings pitched. And four runs, or five runs are his, yes, all five. On seven hits. One ball and no strike for Garaki. Garaki led off the third inning, singled and scored. Came around on Maddo Ambrose's base hit. Six pitches in a row missing the zone by Christian Johnson. Who's mixed up? That might be too early to make that statement. But uh, Johnson, who's pitched a lot today and throwing hard in that win against Bird Island. Good pickoff attempt there from Johnson to Roch Whitaker. Fridges back safely. Runner at first. Pitch outside. Count two balls and one strike. On the outside corner, I guess, is what I should say. A lot of pitches right now in this game. Two and one. Nobody out. And the runner goes. Slash and foul as they try to hit behind him. And it's two balls, two strikes. Two and two the count. We're just in the bottom of the fourth inning. Four one Fairmont leading over Cold Spring in the seventh. Bottom of the fourth. Throw back to first, and again it's close, but Fridges is in.
Iraqi at the plate. 2-2 pitch on the way. Runner does go, and it's foul. So two times. Freeges has been off to the races, and both times he's going to have to scoot back to first base as Garaki fouls the pitch off. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Johnson delivers, curveball fouled away again. Trying to get him to miss on a spinner and fighting it off is Garaki. Garaki one for two. Seven for 17 in this tournament. Throw back, that time was closer. That might have been the closest of the three. Two balls, two strikes. Runner at first. Freeges, he's off and running again. Pitches high. Throw down to second, and he's underneath the tag. Throw down floated a little bit uh, by the catcher, Rickaby. And with the stolen base is Freeges. So the count is full from Christian Johnson to Jordan Garaki, who will advance on to the championship game. It's where we're at right now with this tournament. Foul ball again. Four foul balls on two strike counts from Garaki. So he's making Johnson work. Again, earlier today, Chan Hassan wins its third championship in a row in Class B. They rally with a two run homer in the eighth inning to beat Moorhead. Slash down the right field line, and that's going to fall, and that will likely be extra bases. Garaki, no, will stop. No, he'll go on the throw. He heads into second. And the RBI for Garaki, the run scores for the Irish. That's Fridges. I'm going to call it a single. He had hesitated down on the throw. Fridges with the run. Now that Second hit for Garaki and an RBI. That's going to bring up Rodas. Rodas also singled. He was erased on a ground ball double play at third. So a run in and it's six to four. Christian Johnson checks the runner briefly and pitches to Rodas who fouls it off. Bottom of the fourth inning, 6-4. Lots of runners on base and lots of runs scored here for an early part of the game. We're already 10 runs in, and we've only had three-plus at-bats. Owen one Johnson. Comes to a set, checks the runner at second, delivers, and it's a grounder right back to the pitcher. Rodas is out as Johnson delivers the throw over to first base. Runner doesn't go anywhere, and that will bring up Matt Ambrose. Bro- Ambrose with an RBI single the last inning. Already in the fourth inning, half of the squad for St. Patrick will have three at-bats. Cold Spring and Fairmont playing over in Springfield. Game's already near its ending. We are just in the bottom of the fourth inning. Started just a couple minutes behind them. Johnson trying to get comfortable on the mound as the breeze kicks up and the temperature drops as the sun sets. Ambrose, the catcher. We've watched highlights of him homering at this ballpark a couple weeks ago. Johnson Looks at a pitch on the outside part of the plate for strike one. Johnson with the strike. Ambrose looks at that pitch. Ambrose, one for two with the RBI. Six RBI so far in the tournament. (laughs) 
That one is outside. Ball and a strike. One and one to Matt Ambrose. Johnson kicks and delivers. Off the end of the bat foul, one and two. St. Patrick Irish. Uh, have advanced as far as they've ever advanced before. And with this team, they now lead a chance to play in the title game. Grounder right up the middle. Second baseman Whitaker can't field it cleanly. And it'll be an infield single for Ambrose, his second hit. Running over at third now is Garaki. And that will bring Seth Ambrose to the plate. And Seth Ambrose singled and scored in the second. He grounded into a 5-3 double play that stifled the momentum momentarily for the Irish in the third inning. Ground ball, this could be another double play. Six to four over, and it is a six four three double play. So Seth Ambrose. <laughs> knocks into a second as that double play. That's Pistolka to Whitaker. On to Whitaker. Dylan flipping it over to Roch for the final out. So we're going to go to the fifth inning now, top of the fifth, and we'll keep it right here with the score. 6-4. We'll be right back on PrepSpotlight.tv. Far, we've been traveling far from the Twin Cities down to Milroy for three weekends in a row. But it's been a fun travel as we've been here for the State Sea Baseball Tournament. We've also been sending crews to Springfield for the Sea Tournament, and we'll be back there for one more day. Championships Monday, Labor Day Monday tomorrow, and we'll see here in the next little bit exactly which two teams are going to be competing. Grody pitching for St. Patrick Grody from Faribault and he delivers in the fifth inning, top of the fifth inning to Roch Whitaker. Roch homered earlier today in the quarterfinal game and the breaking pitch is going to come back in for a strike and the count is one and one. Whitaker in this game walked and scored. He's walked both times. He does not have a at bat, an official at bat, two plate appearances. Pitch is eye and away, one ball and two strikes. Top of the fifth. Pitch misses outside and it's two and two. Matt Ambrose thought might have been a strike. Thinking about flipping it down to third base and getting it around the horn, but not the case. Two two. Pitch was on the inner half and right off the hands of Roch Whitaker. The breeze is still blowing now more out of the west than it was before. It was north-northwest earlier today. Now this looks like it's straight west. Maybe a little helper. Another curveball by Grody and it's flip foul again by Roch Whitaker. Roch 4-4-11 four, four, 
A home run, three runs batted in, and three runs scored. He digs back into the batter's box, and Grody delivers low, and the count now runs full. A lot of pitches, a lot of base runners in this game. Seth Ambrose, the former Gopher hockey player, has knocked in himself into two double plays his last two times up. Pops straight up. Matt Ambrose looks forward, but it's right above us. Right above us. Top of the fifth inning. And the 3-2 pitch. Flip foul. Grounded to short. Bridges over to Ambrose, and there's two outs. Well, one out. I'm a little ahead of myself there. One down. Just counting, I believe, I'm at 21 base runners in this game. 21 guys have reached base, and we are into the just the top of the fifth inning. So the base paths are getting their fair share of use. After this next inning, they'll come out. The grounds crew will manicure them. Hunter Rickaby with a two RBI single last time up, scoring Panning and Mann. He lifts it up in the air. Shortstop calling it, third baseman calling it. Both are fridges, both are brothers. It is the third baseman, Ryan Fridges, who makes the catch. So two down. And that will bring up their Panning. Barrett 0 for 2. Barrett did not play in the game earlier today. Swing and a miss on the fastball that's at the letters, maybe a smidge above. 6 4. Six runs on 10 hits in an air for St. Patrick, a kind of a questionable air on a ball that landed in between the right fielder, first baseman, and second baseman. Quickly 0 and 2. Four runs on five hits for the Young America Cardinals. And a fly ball that's going to be down the line. I think that's going to stay in play if he has room to go get it. Oh, my. That is a phenomenal effort there, and we'll see if he caught it. Well, I don't know if they can verify that he caught the ball. Wow. And... Executive producer says, go back and take a look at a replay on that one. Just an unbelievable effort from Jace Westman. Westman going full steam right over the fence and out of play. What a – I just love the effort. Catch it, don't catch it. That's one that might leave a little mark on the rib area. And a, another breaking ball is flipped, and Fridges makes the play. So we are going to go to the bottom of the fifth inning. We're going to step aside. You're watching Prep Spotlight.tv, 6 4, St. Patrick over Young America. What's special about high school sports? The passion, the excitement. The memories. Down a three in the buzzer. Go! Oh. It's good! Du Bois wins it for the Rebels! It's about impacting your community. Connecting your business to this audience. This is where your customers live. Where they shop. This is their circle of life. This is where your business should be. Connect with your best potential customers. This is your invitation. Get in the game.
Andy and Greg with you back here on PrepSpotlight.tv. We are in the bottom of the fifth inning. Over in the eighth inning in Springfield, Fairmont leading by three, trying to book a spot in tomorrow's championship. Christian Johnson with the pa- uh, pitch to DeLuca. DeLuca walked and scored. And he had a sacrifice, so he is yet to have an official at bat as well. No balls, two strikes. Is Johnson having to load it back up after pitching eight innings in the first game and getting the Young America squad here. One and two the count to DeLuca. Johnson still throwing with very good velocity, reaches back and throws a slider that misses. It's two and two. And two. Christian Johnson stares disappointedly in after not getting that call. 2-2 two, two pitch, grounded foul. Part of me had been working on things I wanted to say this week and this game, and I thought if Young America could advance on, maybe get to a title game, I was going to say they, it's a chance for a YA title, which would be, for those old football fans, may be a little punny. But I'm not sure if I'm going to get the chance to use it. Three balls, two strikes now. And DeLuca lifts it towards left center field. It'll be the left fielder, man who gets both hands up there to make the catch. So one down in the fifth. And here comes Freges. The executive producer said in between the innings here, Freges had a little bit of an exchange with the pitcher. And Johnson pitching to Fridges, and he has the breaking ball, and he misses. So Fridges hitting from the right side. The right-handed hitter, Johnson, delivers. It's a fastball, ground ball wide. And the crowd for Young America is giving it to Ryan Fridges. 0-2 pitch on the way. Misses inside, one and two. 6-4 the score. Two and two the count. It was two and one, first pitch of the ball. Two balls, two strikes, and an out. Swing and a miss. And that strikeout gets the Young America crowd all fired up. (laughs) It's meaning as much to the fans in the stands as the players on the field. Andrus, who has had a super solid day for St. Patrick, fouls off the first pitch. He has a two RBI, one for one. Sacrifice fly, run batted in, and then a base hit with a run batted in. One and two, as Christian Johnson is trying to get his first and the first one, two, three inning for the squad. from Young America. Young America trailing 6-4. Two strike pitch up high, fastball. And Johnson is, you can tell he's found a little extra kick in that step right now. He's got it out of the windup, hands that is in front of his face and the pitch is a slider down and away. Fairmont has added another run against Cold Spring and they take a four run lead. (laughs) 
two outs, nobody on. Zach Endrush with his two RBI so far in the game. And he looks at strike three. So, Young America fired up. And maybe Fridges fired up Young America after getting out of that last inning. We're going to the sixth inning. We're going to be right back on PrepSpotlight.tv. We are back for the top of the sixth inning in a game that's got a little chirping, got a lot of base running. The grounds crew has done their work here in the sixth. And right now, it's 6-4. St. Patrick, the Irish. Top of the six, Whitaker misses or has the pitch miss up and in the pitch from Grody. So Grody pitching as well for the second time today in two games, and he gets an off-speed pitch, swing and a miss, and it's one ball and one strike. One one pitch. Fouled away, one and two. They scored all four of their runs in the third inning. Young America did, and now they're in the sixth. Strike three on the breaking pitch, and Whitaker is down looking. Cole Peters at the plate, he's one for two. He has two runs batted in. Last time up, single bases loaded and two runs came scampering home. Swing and a miss on a good off-speed pitch by Grody. And the fair ball Laker. Another breaking pitch, this one up and in and it's two, one and two. But the first pitch was called ball, but he's got one, two. As the breeze kicks in a little bit, foul straight back. Tried to make him climb the ladder on a fastball. Breaking pitch popped up. Flip of the bat by Peters. And the catch is made by Garaki. I'm sorry, by Freegis. That's for the other Freegis, my bad. It's on one, I mean 11. Two down. Pistolka coming to the plate. He's 0 for 2. Fly ball, ground out. Fly ball and a ground out. Something along those lines. Still in the eighth inning, 5-1 to one Fairmont leading in at the plate. Pitch inside, fastball from Grody. One ball, no strikes to Pistolka. Fastball in, count one and one. St. Patrick is in their fifth game. They had a tussle with Regal in the opening weekend of play. It was 1-1 going into the bottom of the eighth inning. Popped up from Pistolka. And that'll be a quick inning. So we're going to the bottom of the sixth inning. We're going to keep it here as it is six to four. Christian Johnson is going to make his way back out there. And we'll just talk about the road the St. Patrick Irish have gotten to this point. 
It was a tussle in that first game right here in Millwright. It was Greg and Andy in the excellent adventure starting here. And the game was 1-1 into the bottom of the eighth. And a run score to make it 2-1 and then a three-run blast from Matt Ambrose to make it 5-1. And they escaped and moved on. After that, the second weekend, they played over in Springfield and won 10-1 over Rochester. Then yesterday, they came back here to Milroy and scored 16 runs against Carver to advance on to the quarterfinals. That was their third game. Then earlier today, another tussle against the Bluffton Braves. Another game that was so well played. And St. Patrick is able to escape with a 2-1 win. Scored two first and then held on from there. And that advanced them to the semifinals, where they are now up 6-4 on Young America. 7-1 now, Fairmont all but icing that game. And the number nine hitter, Westman, will hit for St. Patrick. And the first pitch is a fastball outside. One ball, no strike. And the pitch is high. 2-0 2-0 to Westman. Johnson still throwing hard, bringing it. The pitcher from the Cologne Hollanders. Cologne just down 2-12 from Young America. Drafted pitcher. And the count 2-1. and one. Missing outside with the breaking pitch, and it's 3-1. and one. Lead off Manis Westman, then we'll go back to the top of the order. Fridges and Garaki. 8-1, Fairmont leading. Strike two, pitch right at the knees against Westman. Westman with an RBI single and a strikeout. Three balls, two strikes, and he strikes out again. One out now in the six. Westman one for three. And that brings up Freges, who has reached base twice on walks. And he has scored a run. Freges gets a strike and... Johnson, who is, I got to believe, pitching on adrenaline right now. It's another swing and a miss. He'll feel his efforts from today, tomorrow, for sure. But now he's got his team just down by two runs, and he's trying to keep it that way. And a strikeout again. Four strikeouts in a row for Christian Johnson. He has now worked three complete innings. I got him for five strikeouts. Garaki looks at a fastball off the plate, way off the plate, ball one. 6-4 is your score. In the other game, Fairmont has blown it open. They're up by seven late. Swing and a miss. And Garaki sees the count go one and one. Right now it's just pitcher, catcher. Johnson delivering to Rickaby. Outside, corner. Outside, corner. One ball and two strikes. One-two pitch coming from Christian Johnson, and he misses high, and the count is two and two. Two Two-two pitch, and Johnson, out of the windup, delivers slash foul. The sun is set in Milroy, and the sun is not too far from setting on this tournament, and it's 
Milroy section of it. Lots of baseball over three weekends and a tip of the cap to everybody. Missing low and the count is full. Tip of the cap of everybody here on the Milroy staff. Worked on the field crew, worked to get folks to where they needed to be, get people into the ballpark. 3-2 pitch on the way. Breaking ball, strike three. Five straight strikeouts for Christian Johnson. And we're going to go to the seventh inning. And this, there's still a lot of spirit in this one for sure. A lot of spirit. And I'm going to tell you a lot of baseball left in this. We go to the top of the seventh. We'll be right back on Prep Spotlight. <laughs> Prep Spotlight.tv. Just talking to the. And just talking to the folks up in the press box as they're tracking the pitches for Christian Johnson, the pitcher for the Cologne Hollanders, who was drafted by Young America and has been their guy today. He worked eight innings in the first game and now has gone three and a third in this one as we go to the seventh inning. In a 6-4 game, and he's at 180 pitches for the day with a break in between. Not a long break, but an hour, let's say an hour and 30 minutes maybe, hour and 20 minutes. First pitch a strike as Grody is still towing the rubber for the St. Patrick Irish. And in the seventh inning, it is the top of the order. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. And the strikeout is recorded by Grody on Isaac Horman. Now Manny, center fielder, number 25, Grace Manny. That's his third strikeout for Grody. First pitch to Panning is high. He comes back. Takes a little something off the fastball, and the count is one and one. Top of the seventh. Pitch misses outside, and it's now two and one to Panning. Panning singled and scored. He is one for three. Pitch misses outside, and it's now three and one. Off-speed pitch, pulls the string on it a little bit, and we're even our full count now. Three balls, two strikes, one out, and Grody is just getting the ball and going. I have hardly a time to peek down at the score sheet before he is ready to go. Three balls, two strikes, one out in the seventh. And a walk. So the tying run will come to the plate now in the form of Matt Mann. Mann. Reached on an air, singled and scored, and popped out, and the pitcher fielded that one to end the fourth inning. So Mann, the right-handed hitting left fielder, comes to the plate, and he hits it out towards right center. The center fielder, Rodas, is there to make the catch. So Rodas calls off the right fielder, Andres, and there are two outs. Well, Ratch Whitaker has already left the yard one time today, and the wind is blowing in a fashion that might help him again. A home run ties it. Of course, they would just look to extend the inning. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Ratch gets set in the batter's box. Grody out of the set. Steps off the back of the mound.
Pitch on the way, and it's grounded up the middle. Fielded by the shortstop. Fridges the flip to Garaki, and a nice play by the middle infield, and that ends the inning on a fielder's choice. Out, Whitaker and the Young America Cardinals sit down. They head to the bottom of the seventh inning. We'll keep it here for the stretch. You're listening and watching PrepSpotlight.tv. No runs, no hits, no errors. They beat one base runner, so that brings us up to the seventh inning stretch. Baseball's national anthem, everyone join in singing, take me out to the ball game. Geislinger doing some biz, uh, damage in the state tournament. Tyler Geislinger out of Cold Spring with a two-run homer for Cold Spring, and they are now trailing 8-3. Here we're in the bottom of the seventh, and still pitching is Christian Johnson as he will now be going towards the 200 pitch mark. Somebody will need to pick up his arm on the way back to Cologne on Highway 212 and hand it to him because he is working a lot. And now he started 2-0 to Kyle Rodas. Rodas coming to the plate for the fourth time is one for three. Singled in the third. Two balls, no strikes, and Christian Johnson misses outside. And it's three and oh. No activity down in the bullpen, so this might be Johnson's inning trying to figure out if he can last. Fastball, still with some good pop on it, and the count is three and one. I think he was, would be better off in trying to get quick outs. Falls behind in the count, three and oh. Fouled away, and Rodas and Johnson stare each other down with the three, two count now. Rodas seven for 20 in the tournament. Hitting above 300. Bottom of the seventh inning. St. Patrick scoring two in the second, three in the third, one in the fourth. Took the lead back after giving up four in the third and then added a run to make it 6-4. Three balls, two strikes. Johnson, foul ball. Chasing after it is Roch Whitaker, but no chance. You get a look on the pan back at some of the Pretty colors of the sunsetting sky, some purples and pinks. And the western sky as the days are getting shorter and we're heading towards Labor Day tomorrow. This is a traditional Labor Day weekend baseball celebration and a strikeout. And just so you're counting, that is six straight strikeouts for Johnson. Six straight. He sat down with a K in the scoreboard. One down. And Matt Ambrose comes to the plate. Ambrose with two hits and a run scored. And an RBI. First pitch, breaking ball, in first strike. And Christian Johnson is just rearing back and playing good old country hardball. Pitch misses outside, one and one. Just saying, I'll continue to take the ball even though I'm at close to 200 pitches one out here in the bottom of the seventh pitch to Ambrose low two balls and a strike trying to break off some breaking pitches and misses we're going to the ninth inning 
top of the ninth with Fairmont leading eight to three. Here, bottom of the seventh, and another foul ball, and it's two and two from Ambrose, or from Johnson to Ambrose. Ambrose homered in this ballpark a couple weeks ago. He has six runs batted in on the tournament, and he gets one right on the fist, the fastball. He was late on it, but he has just enough to flick it foul right back towards the net. Such an enjoyable three weeks of baseball here in Milroy, and the 2-2 pitch, breaking ball misses inside, full count. Seen a little bit of everything. Some great pitching, fantastic pitching, some solid hitting, some power hitting, good base running. And the count, 3-2. Breaking ball, strike three. And the strikeouts continue. That one looked a little bit up and in from our vantage point. And Matt Ambrose surely thought the same thing. Seven. Strikeouts in a row. Up comes Seth Ambrose, and Seth, who singled and scored to get things going in the second inning, the first run of the game, has had a little bit of a tough day at the plate. He's grounded into two double plays, so the 6-4 lead might have been just stretched a little bit more, but two ground ball double plays have helped eradicate innings. No balls and a strike to Seth Ambrose, and the pitch from Johnson pulled foul in the count 0-2. Well, he's one pitch away from strikeout number eight in a row, nine overall. No balls, two strikes. Two outs. And the pitch. Foul tipped and caught. So it is. A second straight inning of snapper mow him down inning. Three strikeouts, and then he struck out two in the fifth. So, uh tip of your cap effort to Christian Johnson and I'm not saying he's done I'm just saying what he's doing right now and keeping his team alive is pretty remarkable we're going to take a break you're watching PrepSpotlight.tv's coverage we're going to the top of the eighth inning we will be back in just a minute Take a look at the skies over the western horizon from Milroy. We're down in the southwest corner of the state. Down by Marshall, about 15 minutes from Marshall. If you have never been to this part of the state of Minnesota, it is the agricultural haven. And we are in the top of the eighth inning. 6-4, and it's Joe Grote E who is pitching. There's a couple guys warming up, at least one player warming up right now, and he is a member of the St. Patrick Irish. As Grote has started with two balls to Rickaby. So the catcher Rickaby leading off the eighth. One for three with a run scored. Two RBI. And 3-0, and oh. so the fired up Young America crowd singing their team fight song and watching their pitcher strike out eight in a row. Grody gets a pitch over for a strike, and it's 3-1 and one for the drafted pitcher from Faribault. Right now it's in the hands of two drafted pitchers. Ground ball. Hit out to second, bobbled by Garaki, throw, and they get him. So Garaki hangs with it. That's what you say on that play. Hang with it, ma'am. And he does, and he knocks it down, picks it up, and barely gets Rickaby. Brett Panning is coming to the plate. He's 0 for 3. He's the designated hitter.
And the pitch is high from Grody. Grody, who's come in and shut the door down on the young American Cardinal, who's no doubt being overshadowed by this strikeout effort of Christian Johnson, who's now 200 pitches plus today. Not in this game, but today. He pitched eight innings in the quarterfinals. Two balls, no strikes to Barrett Panning. And the 2-0 pitch is a get-me-over fastball that has fell back. On to the ninth inning, and a run has just scored again for Fairmont, so they're back up by six. But their, their game was moving along ahead of us. 2-1 pitch is low, 3-1. And now it's actually 10 10 to 3 Fairmont about ready to close it off and get to a championship game ground ball fouled off of the leg of Barrett Panning and there's three balls and two strikes the winner of this game moving on to Springfield tomorrow 1 o'clock we had mentioned it earlier, the ace of the St. Patrick's staff, Colin Dank, who twirled a gem in the first game of the tournament against Regal, might be available tomorrow. He has not pitched since. Good ball hit out to left center. Oh, my! And there is a major collision, but they hang on to the ball. Those two go like a... Safety hitting a wide receiver over the middle. Oh, my. You won't see a more high-speed collision in town ball than that. And they hang on to it. That it's Rodas that hangs on to it, and he is now down. He's got to stretch this thing out. He got. They both took it right in the solar plexus area. That both were sprinting after. That ball was hitting to the gap, and both wanted a crack at it. But what a play by Rodas. Let's take a look at We're watching it on replay. Oh, and you see it's just a major collision. If you have a chance, you have replay on your own. You can just take the bar at the bottom of the screen back and watch it. And then when you're done watching it, you can watch it live. But that is a major collision between the right fielder and the left fielder. So that was Rodas and, and uh, Jace Westman. So Rodas, you have to salute the effort there. And there's two outs you know, in the eighth inning. No second baseman number 29, Dylan Whitaker. Dylan Whitaker coming to the plate. Two down, and the first pitch to Whitaker is fastball. Well, that's a breaking pitch. Strike one. Took some stuff off of it. No balls and a strike. And the pitch from Grody to Whitaker, breaking ball, stays up high, and it's one ball, one strike. Two outs. Pitch misses high. And a swing. Miss, two balls and two strikes. Two and two, two outs in the eighth inning. Six four is your score. Pitch misses. And the count is four. Three and two, Grody delivers to Whitaker and it's fouled away. Whitaker today. Single, walked, and has struck out. One for two. Dylan Whitaker at second base. And that pitch misses outside. Everybody from the St. Patrick team was heading towards the dugout. Every single one. But it's ball four. So the second time Whitaker has walked, and that's going to bring up Cole Peter.
Number eight hitter and number nine hitter now with two outs. Cole Peters, the eight hitter, the right fielder. Pops it up. Might stay in play. It's going to be close. Drifting, 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 and foul. Just over the net and out of play. Everybody scattering in that front row. Cole today with a two-run scoring single in the third. He is one for three. Oh, it was spinning back, and I think the wind was bringing that back as well. Everybody chasing it. The pitcher <laughs> hit the net hard, as did the catcher and the first baseman, the two Ambroses. Breaking ball over for a strike, and the count is 0-2. Four runs on five hits for Young America. Six runs on ten hits. This, is, this game has become more of a pitching duel after these two kids who have pitched a lot today came back into the game. The starting pitchers both gave up a lot of base runners and with them a lot of runs. After the second guys came in, it has been a pitcher's duel. 0-2 oh, the count. Breaking ball misses inside, and it's 1-2. and two. Top half of the eighth inning. St. Patrick is the home team, and they lead by two. Pitch outside, and the count goes to two and two, trying to get the slider over. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. It's a two-run lead for St. Patrick. Yes, deuces are wide. And that's a strikeout, and Grody gets out of the inning, striking out Cole Peters. So the Young America Cardinals will be down to their final three outs. We'll see if their lead is, their, if the deficit is two or if it's any more. And we'll get that answer with the bottom of the eighth inning. And we'll just keep it right here. St. Patrick coming to the plate and having eight batters in a row set down by strikeouts. And Christian Johnson is coming back out again. He has given everything he has today. The winning pitcher as a starter against Bird Island in the quarterfinals. He also has a win in relief in the first week of the tournament against Laverne. Now in relief. He's trying to keep his team within two and give them one last crack at it. One last at-bat in the ninth where they will come up with nine, one, and two in the order. And we'll see how that plays out if they're going to allow Blake Pistolka to hit in the nine spot. He is 0 for 3 in the day. And then Isaac Horman and Bryce Panning have been two of the top hitters in the tournament so far. Fairmont is on to the championship game, so the Fairmont Martins have had a longer season than most as they were playing some games in Iowa. First pitch from Johnson, outside corner, strike one. And we'll flip it back over, Dom DeLuca at the plate. And DeLuca is the last person to not have struck out. And he's now down 0-2. So if he strikes out DeLuca, everybody will have struck out in this time around and that's incredible no balls two strikes pitch misses up up caught the corner of the plate it was up one and two six four the score in the bottom of the eighth pitch up again that one was up and it's two and two christian johnson from cologne a hollander Two balls, two strikes. And the pitch on the way. Swung and missed, but the ball gets away. And I'm guessing, based on where it goes, DeLuca's going to reach. It's still a strikeout, so he struck out nine, but he doesn't retire. DeLuca. So, K in the wild pitch puts DeLuca at first. Nine straight strikeouts, but not an out recorded on that one. He's looking for a four-strikeout inning. He's done everything but, so why not get a four-strikeout inning? 
So Fridges is at the plate, and Ryan has been the has been uh, getting a lot of uh, angry comments from the crowd of Young America. Might be rightfully deserved. I'm just stating that. Running at first base, number 18, Kevin Pexa. Pexa running for DeLuca. Fridges at the plate. Ryan today has two base hits. He scored uh, after reaching on an infield single in the second, and he singled again in the third, and he drove in a run with that. They're going to put the bunt play on. He squares and pulls it back. Ball one, one and oh. Runner at first is now Pexa. Again, Fridges puts the bunt out and fouls it away. One and one, bottom of the eighth inning. The winner here will take on Fairmont. Six four your score. Will it be St. Patrick Fairmont or will it be Young America Fairmont? Team from southern Minnesota will be playing Fairmont on Highway 15. They can just travel up 15. Well, you probably just shoot over to 4 and then up from Fairmont for the championship tomorrow. Again, the bunt down. This time it's fair. He's running inside the line, but they get the out anyway. Out is recorded. There's some discussion afterwards as Fridges caught the arm of Whitaker. Everybody's saying it's okay. Whitaker, Roch Whitaker says, all right, let's just get some outs now and let's get ourselves back into the dugout and get get our bats. Fridges sacrifices the runner over. Over to second is Pexa running for DeLuca, and that's going to bring up Zach Andres. Two runs batted in on a sack fly and on a single. The strikeout streak ends at nine. He's got double-digit strikeouts, and he's came into the game in the third inning. Young America trailing 6-4. Discussion on the signs between Rickaby and Christian Johnson. It's a two-run lead. St. Patrick surely wouldn't mind an insurance run to make it 7-4. The right-handed or left-handed hitting right fielder, Zach Andres, is at the plate. Swing, foul tip, and the count all on one. Pop back on the 0 1 pitch, and the count all on two now. Well over 200 pitches for. Christian Johnson. Runner at second is Pexa. He pinch ran for DeLuca, who reached after striking out on a wild pitch. Zach Andrus, the right fielder, foul tips the 0 2 pitch, and it can't be held on. And Rickaby tosses it back to the pitcher, and they've got to do it again. Breeze still kicking out, just to keep that in mind, blowing out to left field. Store that in the back of your memory. Pitch driven to first base on three hops. Picked up by, oh, and there's Whitaker again. Gets a shoulder block after the play is made. 
So the St. Patrick Irish there, he was running. He slowly went to first base, and the runner, Andrus, was running hard down the line. And now the entire infield is taking shots at the umpire. The whole infield is angry with the umpire. And Pistolka, the shortstop, is having to be dragged by the second baseman, Whitaker. Whitaker also saying some words. And they just throw Whitaker out of the game. So Whitaker is gone, or Pistolka, one of the two. I didn't see which one was going to get thrown out. We'll have to see which one it is. But it was a play of gamesmanship on both sides. So the ground ball was hit the first, and Roch Whitaker, Roch Whitaker, kind of walked towards the bag and the runner Andrus ran hard and they collided at the bag so there is somebody ejected somebody got thrown the question is who got thrown yeah it was a it was a I'd say a boneheaded play on both sides if you're gonna just throw at it the first baseman should get to the bag quickly and get the out the runner doesn't need to make any contact with the first baseman, and that's exactly what happened. So we'll take a look in to see if it was the shortstop that got tossed. He's off the field, I believe, right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, the, the runner, Andrus, made contact. The first baseman also, though, did not make an effort to get the ball to the bag quick especially with a runner heading towards third. I'm not sure why you would dilly-dally to make that out. And as you, we're looking at it again, he just slows down, walks to the bag, and Andrus, frustrated with it, did a bonehead thing as well. And truthfully, there should be a discussion about that. But now we have to figure out who's playing where, and it looks like they're going to move the third baseman, Horman over to shortstop. Heading to first base. Heading to first base is number five. So number five is going into first base. And Roch Whitaker is going to go play third base. So he's going to go from first base after having the, been in the epicenter of that play. And a fan has just been thrown out. And there's a lot of finger pointing, and a fan has been thrown out. Angry fans. Angry baseball players. And the St. Patrick Irish now. And the person I feel for most in this situation is Christian Johnson, really. Johnson... Christian Johnson has to be the one that, as much as he has pitched, he has now had to take a five-minute break. So a fan has been thrown out. And the first pitch to Westman is a strike as he offers to bunt with the runner at third. So there's two outs in the inning. I think we should set that up. There was a three unassisted for the second out. And Westman's batting with the runner at third in a case where all heck is breaking loose and the pitch is high and it's a ball and a strike. The winner to the championship game. 
It is heated. One ball, one strike, and the pitch fouled away. One and two, the count. So a fan ejected, a player ejected, and it looked like it's Pistolka who got thrown out of the game. So Pistolka, the shortstop, is out. So that moves Horman over to short. Pistolka was scheduled to bat. He was the leadoff guy in the ninth inning. Well, that will change. One ball, two strikes. Breaking ball, misses. Two and two, the count. Hooked it back over the plate, but it was low to Westman. Westman with a base hit and an RBI. He's got another RBI opportunity. He's got a runner 90 feet away. Lifted out to right center field. It is a high fly ball, and it is the center fielder, Panning, who makes the play. We're going to just keep it right here because I don't want to miss anything. We're going to the top of the ninth inning. And it comes down to... Joe Grody is going to stay out on the hill. So they have a St. Patrick pitcher warming up. Grody pitching from Fairbow, now pitching for St. Patrick in this tournament. Grody got the save in game one. And he has the chance to get the win here in game two. So a pretty good day when you can mark both sides of the column, a save and a win. Ugliness here in the eighth inning, the bottom of the eighth inning. Saw a fan get ejected, saw a player get ejected, saw what I would say is a not a good baseball play by Zach Andrus, who's had a great baseball day, but the right fielder did intentionally contact the runner or the first baseman now the first baseman of course you could question his motives on how he fielded that ball when there's a runner on base and the game's still going on how he played that play out so yeah it's got to be because new hitter on the and the first pitch is a strike Brandon Stender. Brandon Stender has got the count one and one. He came into the game after the ejection of Pistolka, and Stender now has the count one and two. Stender, one of the managers of this team, one of the coaches of this team, and he was doing his best to try to calm things down as he grabbed a glove to come into the field. Pitch hits him. And a breaking ball. They say he didn't make an effort to get out of the way. And the hit batter. So the count will be two balls and two strikes, as they're saying Stender did not make an effort to get out of the way of the pitch. Two balls and two strikes. We saw a play like that. If it wasn't last week, it was the first week here where they made the same call. Two balls and two strikes. And the pitch is high to Stender, and it's three and two. It was a breaking ball from Groat, and Stender, was, it was ruled, did not get out of the way. 3-2 pitch, and it is lifted. It's going to be right behind the bag at first, and with it is Ambrose. So Ambrose... Makes the play for the first out in the ninth inning. One down, and it's up to the top of the order. And this top of the order has been pretty potent in this tournament for this Young America Cardinals team. So Zach Isaac Horman, who is 0 for 4, but has had a solid tournament. First pitch up high, ball one. He was 7 for 14 coming into the game, 7 for 18 now. Horman trying to get on base and bring up a tying run, and Brody misses, and it's two balls and no strikes. Going to throw a little tar onto the bat so he can hold on to it a little bit better. And the count, two balls. 
and no strikes. One out, and the score six to four. In a wild game with a lot of chippiness and chirpingness, if I could use both of those right. Pitch at the letter, strike one to Isaac Horman. Horman granted out, flew out to the center and or to yeah center and right field, and he struck out. He hits it out to center, and that's going to be caught by the second baseman Garaki. Garaki got a jump on it on the ball that was hit off the handle, and it looked like it might drop in center for a base hit, but not the case. Garaki makes the play. So it's now up to Bryce Panning. And Panning is one for three today. Seven for 15, hitting just below 500. Two down. First pitch is over for a strike. There are no postgame handshakes in this COVID world. Otherwise, we might see what would be transpiring here. Panning lifts it towards left. And coming on to make the catch and get the out is the left fielder, Westman. And so the St. Patrick Irish win the game 6-4. to four, And they will play in the championship against Fairmont tomorrow at 1 o'clock. So a semifinal win for the St. Patrick Irish. And they will move on to a chance to play for their first ever championship. St. Patrick getting a f- phenomenal effort from Joe Grody. Well, we're just hearing that it's 11 a.m. 11 a.m. So we will make sure that our crews are there. And so 11 a.m. tomorrow in Springfield. So everybody hearing that from the public address announcement. Let's wrap up this game real fast, and then we're going to say goodnight and make our way back up to the Twin Cities. It's been a fun, fun three weeks here in Milroy. And it ends with a game with some fireworks and some intensity and some chirping and a lot of everything. Sometimes that you just get in a game like this, and that's what happened. So Joe Grody comes in after the starting pitcher, Christian Medic, went two and two-thirds innings. Grody finishes up the game from the rest of that sixth and a third inning and only gives up one hit and no runs. And... Grody gets the win. The losing pitcher will be the starting pitcher, Josh Lenz. Lenz, Josh Lenz, the starting pitcher for Young America. He had gone two uh, and two-thirds innings as well, gave up five runs of the six, and so he ends up taking the loss. There is no save in this one. So big at-bats for St. Patrick in this one as they score two in the second, three in the third and one in the fourth and up and down the board you see hits from everybody 10 hits on the game they did also commit an error which was a little bit of a questionable error but with that scoring two in the second three in the third and one in the fourth that was the last of the scoring no runs in the last five innings of this game and St. Patrick wins it Six to four. St. Patrick making their way to their first championship game. Young America, Young America, the Cardinals battled in this tournament and make it to the semifinals before they lose. St. Patrick now has won five games. Two games today, winning two to one and six to four. So on that note, we're going to step aside and call it a day. St. Patrick wins it. Again, the winning pitcher, Joe Grody, Fairbo Laker. And he'll be, he has pitched his team to a championship game against the Fairmont Martins. So tomorrow, St. Patrick, Fairmont. It's going to be at 11 a.m. in Springfield. We'll be there for the championship game coverage. You can join us at prepspotlight.tv. We've appreciated the help and the support and the hospitality of the minnesota baseball association and this great crew in milroy the yankees group that has come in as a pinch hitter maybe the best pinch hitting role in 2020 is they pinch hit and picked up 
half of the Class C tournament and have done a great job in running it here in Milroy. So thanks to everybody who's watched. Thanks to everybody who's been a part of it. To the executive producer, Greg Wilford, thanks for all your hard work. I'm Andy Price, 6-4, the final St. Patrick and Fairmont tomorrow in the championship on PrepSpotlight.tv. Good night, everybody. The 2020 Class C Minnesota Amateur Baseball Tournament is brought to you in partnership with the Minnesota Baseball Association and presented to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 is the hub for all things sports with the Xfinity Sports Zone. And Wings Financial, we're for people like you.